Hello, hello. Okay, so this is a review of the four ways to solve quadratic equations. So this is a good video to watch if maybe you're like a little rusty. So first of all, what is a quadratic equation? So when we say quadratic equations, we are specifically referring to something that looks like this, has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We're trying to solve for x. And the a, b, and c, those are usually going to be numbers. Um, they can be real numbers, which means that they can really be anything. And then a does not equal zero. Now, quadratic equations differ from, say, like a quadratic function. So they look very much the same. The thing about the quadratic equation is that it's equal to zero. So what's, what's like the deal with these two things? So with an equation, you're usually trying to solve this. When you have just just this, ax squared plus bx plus c, and you don't have it equal to like a number, usually we're trying to do other things with this. So a lot of times like we're trying to evaluate or graph or there, there's lots of things you can do with this form. But this particular form we are trying to solve when it equals a number, okay? Now, there are four ways to solve a quadratic equation. You can factor, you can use the square root property, you can complete the square, and you can use the quadratic formula. If you forgot these, don't worry, I've got you in this video. So we're gonna review how each one of these works, just like a little crash course reminder. If you watch this video and any one of these, you're like, oh man, I really forgot this. Don't worry, I have like a full lesson on each one of these. So if you are like, if you really need to go back and review, I've, I've got you covered. But this is just gonna kind of hopefully remind you and dust off the cobwebs in your brain. Now, the natural question with the four techniques is, ah, which one do I use? And the answer to that is actually just whichever is easiest for the problem. So there's actually a best choice usually. So we will take a look at that in this video. And just as a reminder, as far as like possible solutions go, so you're gonna have one or two solutions. And if you have one solution, what will end up happening is that you have that one solution, it repeats itself. Does that make sense? So you could have the same solution twice or two different solutions. And your solutions can be either real or imaginary numbers. Okay. So to review the techniques, we will look at the four different equations that I've, I've got here and then discuss which technique is best. So just as a reminder, I do have free guided notes. I think that they're really helpful for, for videos like this. Um, it just helps you engage a little bit more with the video. Okay, so let's start with 5x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. So this one, I'll just tell you, um, this one can be factored. And it might not be immediately obvious, but if you're, if you're watching this and you're moving into a class like pre-calc or trig or calc, um, a lot of times you'll be given slightly harder things that can still factor. And, and it might take you an extra minute to factor, but it's probably worth your time to try to figure out that, like take that extra minute to see if it factors because factoring is like really one of the, the fastest ways to solve a quadratic. So if you're a little rusty on factoring, what I would recommend is that you just pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out how this factors and then um, hit play when you think you've got it or if you're stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor this. So like I said, hopefully you just paused and, and tried it on yourself, um, tried it for yourself. So the way that this factors, so I always think of um, just how do I get to the first term? So 5x times x will give me 5x squared. And then how do I get to the last term? So that's just one and one. So it's actually pretty straightforward to factor. So then if I were to just multiply this back out together, so I can just kind of check this quickly in my head. So this gives me 5x squared plus 5x plus x plus one. So I can see that that's gonna give me this right here, right? Okay, so let me get rid of all that. And so I've got this factored. And so now what we do is we use what's known as the zero factor property, which says to take these two pieces and set them equal to zero and solve these separately. So I'm gonna have five X plus one equals zero, and then I'm gonna have X plus one equals zero. So I just solve those separately as if now it's, these are their own little equations. So in this case, this is gonna be five X equals negative one. So I get X equals negative one fifth. And then in this case, this will just be X equals negative one. So my two solutions in this case are X equals negative one fifth and X equals negative one. So. How do you know if you can use factoring? This is pretty straightforward in that it either factors or it doesn't. 
So if it doesn't factor, you are automatically forced to use one of the other techniques. If it does factor, then if I were you, I would just factor it. So that is probably the most straightforward technique to choose. Okay. So now let's move on to B. So now I've got X plus four squared equals 12. So this type of problem is also pretty straightforward in, in terms of like which technique to use. This one is going to use the square root property. And the thing about the square root property, so let me just show you kind of like ideal types of problems that would use a square root property. So just for the, the sake of an example, just to help kind of brush you up on this, so these types of problems here are ideal for the square root property because what they have is they have just each thing is being squared. So like in this case, I've got x squared equals seven. So I have a squared thing equal to a number. So notice this might not be x squared, but it is ultimately a squared thing equal to a number. And then this one, this is actually a squared thing equal to a number in disguise in that I could rearrange this last one and write it as x squared equals negative three. So like when you're using the square root property, you have one thing being squared and then a number. That's, that's really the key. So if I had something like x squared plus two x equals five, this would not work for the square root property because, because I have this two x. So you're looking for that like just singular thing being squared. So for B here, to me, it's very obvious that I'd want to use the square root property. That's going to be the easiest thing to use. So let me clear some space. And now let's use the square root property. So to use the square root property, you need the thing that's being squared isolated to one side and then the number on the other side. And actually just one other thing to remind you of, you want that squared thing by itself. So if I had something like three X squared equals nine, what I would want to do is I'd want to actually divide both sides by three. You want that squared thing like totally on its own. You see what I'm saying? So I've got this X plus four squared. The fact that this has parentheses around this and this is being squared, this is a okay. If I had something like, if I had something like this, this would be a problem because the squared thing is like attached to this number here. And then I would want to once again, do the same thing. So divide up by three. So then I'd be left with X plus four squared equals four. And this, that's a different problem, but I just want to kind of get you to recall what we do with the technique here. Okay. So anyways, so this problem is set up exactly how I would want it set up. There's nothing else I have to do to manipulate this. All right. So the next thing that you do is you take the square root of each side. So I've got X plus four squared. And I've got, uh, and I also take a, so I take the square root of each side, but the, the side with the number, this is key. This is the part everybody forgets. So this would be the part I would highlight in your notes is you, you need to have plus or minus here. Okay. And this will now break the problem into two separate mini problems, I guess. So I've got X plus four equals the square root of 12. And I have X plus four equals the negative square root of 12. And so from here, now you just simplify as much as you can. So the square root of 12, so just to kind of do a crash course reminder of how do we simplify the square root. So square root of 12, I can break into square root of four times square root of three. So the square root of four, no, no, no. the square root of 12 breaks down to two times the square root of three. So I've got X plus four equals two times the square root of three and X plus four equals negative two times the square root of three. And then to finish this, I just subtract four from each side. So I have negative four plus two times the square root of three. And I have X equals negative, negative four minus two times the square root of three. And so those would be my two um, answers in this case or solutions. All right. Now for problem C here, this one is ideal for completing the square. And I'll tell you why. First of all, this problem doesn't factor. If you don't believe me, just pause for a second. Try to see if you can factor it. You will find it won't factor. Also, after the whole explanation I gave you from the last one, we can't use a square root property here. Okay, so with completing the square, there are two things that you want. So first of all, you want this term here, this leading coefficient of one. So you want to have just x squared not like two X squared or three X squared. Now this isn't always the case. I will explain to you like 
when this kind of breaks down in a second. But ideally, like a, a big hint that you would use completing the square is if you had just x squared here. And then if this middle term were divisible by two. And you'll see why, I'll remind you why it's an ideal for this to be divisible by two. It doesn't have to be divisible by two, but like if you're trying to choose the easiest technique, if this doesn't factor, you have a leading coefficient of one and this is divisible by two, I think completing the square is pretty quick here. Now, I, I wanna just make a few notes on this before I show you how to solve this problem. So I said that ideally you have a leading coefficient of one. So sometimes you still wanna use completing the square, but you might not have that. So you do have to play around with this a little bit. So you can't start to complete the square unless you have just x squared here. But sometimes what you'll find is that a problem can be very easily manipulated to get that leading coefficient of one. So I, I wrote down just this problem here, two x squared minus eight x plus 16 equals zero. So I can divide everything by two here. I can divide everything here pretty easily by two, right? So if I divided everything by two, I'd be left with, well, the, the problem that we're trying to solve, right? And so you can manipulate a problem if you can manipulate it easily so that you get that leading coefficient of one and then you just end up happening, you like happen to get this ideal term in the middle. Again, that would probably lead itself to completing the square. Now, if I had something like, Let's just say, for example, like 3x squared minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. So think about what happens when I divide this by 3. This kind of sucks, right? Because I am going to be left with this fraction. And so then this is like not ideal for completing the square. So it's not that you can't do it. It's just not as easy. So that's kind of what you're looking for with completing the square. So this problem here is, is really set up for us, OK? So let me clear some space. OK. So with completing the square, um, one thing that you want to have is you want to have the two variables on one side and then the, the constant on another. So we can go ahead and just do that now before we go too far with this. And then remember, so with quadratic equations, they, they are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So what you're going to look for is what is in that b position. So really what's attached to the x. So in this case, the first thing that you do with completing the square is you identify what the b is. So the b in this case is equal to negative 4. And then you take half of that. And that's why you want it to be divisible by 2, ideally. So if I take half of b, i.e., what is half of negative 4? That's just negative 2. Okay? And then the third step is that you take that half b, whatever you found, you square it. So if I take negative two and I square it, what would I get? I would get four. So this is a really big part of completing the square. Identify your b, one half b, one half b squared. Now, the next thing that you do is you take that half b squared and you add it to both sides, to both sides. So when you add it to both sides, what that does is that keeps the equation literally balanced, right, when you add it to both sides. So what I have now is x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals negative 4. Okay, and so then what you'll notice is that this side can be factored. So this side actually factors, if I just took a second to do it, x minus 2 times x minus 2. So you'll notice these are the same two factors, right? That's the whole goal with completing the square is that you get those same two factors. So I rewrite this as x minus two squared equals negative four. And you'll notice this is x and the minus two was from here. So that's not a coincidence. So that's just like a way that this always will work out. So that's just a really quick reminder of how you use completing the square. And then when you get to this point, so look at what we've got now. We've got something squared equals a number. So I can actually just use the square root property from this point on. So if I use the square root property, I take the square root of each side. And if I take the square root of negative four, that's gonna give me plus or minus two i, right? And so, oops, uh, equals plus or minus two i, my bad. And so now my two solutions in this case are gonna be two plus two i and two minus two i those would be my two solutions. And so then just to remind you, so how did I know to do this? 
So ideally, not always, but ideally you have a leading coefficient of one, or when you divide to get to that leading coefficient of one, um, it's easy. And then you ideally would like this term to be even so that when you do these steps, it, it kind of all comes together. So there's your, your crash, course, crash course reminder of completing the square. Let's move on to the last one. x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. So this cannot be factored. If you don't believe me, you can try it on your own. And square root property won't work here. And then notice that the middle term does not um, is not divisible by 2. So probably not ideal for completing the square. We could do it but it, it's just gonna have more fractions in it, so it's, it's kind of a preference thing, really. So since I'm just trying to use each technique once, this is where the quadratic formula comes in. So the quadratic formula, I've got it up here on the screen. So remember, we've got this quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So you identify what's in the a, b, and c position, and then you just plug it into this formula. So if you're in one of my classes, this is something that I expect you just to have memorized. And honestly, like I think in a lot of math classes, like you're supposed to just be able to bust this out at any time. So if you are rusty on this, you might wanna try to remember it. Um, and also I, I think there's like funny things like songs or something to help you remember this. So I always just remember this. I don't know why, but this I've just always been able to remember this. Um, but if you have trouble with it, I'm sure you could like Google like quadratic formula song or something and yeah, maybe you can make a TikTok video about it or whatever. <laughs> okay, so anyways, so I am going to look at my problem here. I'm going to use a quadratic formula. So in the A position, there's no number. I just know that it's a 1 and then my B is equal to negative 5 and then my C is also equal to 1. So I can just plug all of this good stuff in. So I'll leave up the quadratic formula. So let's see, so this becomes, so it's negative b, so that'd be negative negative five, so this will just be five plus or minus the square root of negative five squared minus four times one times one, all of this over two times one. Okay, so, so for usual, maybe you just wanna pause the video here um, and, and see if you can work out all the details. Hit play when you think you've got it. I'm gonna clear some space. And okay, so I will just go ahead and work this out. So this is gonna be 25 minus four under the square root. So I have x equals five plus or minus the square root of 21, all of that over two. So what do you do when you get to this point? So you simplify the square root as much as you can, which in this case, I can't simplify this anymore. And then a lot of times you, you want to leave this in like an exact answer. So you, you leave it in this format and you, you can break this into really two separate answers. So five over two plus the square root of 21 over two, and then five, five over two minus the square root of 21 over two. And so those would be your two like most exact answers. And so again, so how did I know to use the quadratic formula? Couldn't factor, couldn't use the square root property. Completing the square would have just had more fractions. So the quadratic formula kind of takes the longest a lot of times and it's one of the messiest, um, but you tend to use it like if you've exhausted all of your other options. Now this video is getting long enough, so I think I'm gonna cut it off here. I have another video where I go through a set of examples with you guys, so I recommend that you check that one out next. Um, so if you watch this and you're like, okay, I really forgot one of these techniques, I have entire lessons where I really break down how to use any one of these techniques. So if you look in the description below, I have a more complete explanation of all of these. Again, the, the goal of this was just to be a really quick review of how these work. And I, I made this video from the standpoint of maybe it's been a couple of months, maybe even a year since you've seen them. If it's been longer and you really, really forgot them, you might wanna go watch my lesson videos and that'll give you a much more thorough review. Quadratics are super important as you go through like pre-calc and, and calculus. So it is worth your time to go back and review some of these techniques. Okay, so if you found this helpful, please consider leaving a like or a comment or sharing or subscribing to the channel. I like to provide uh, free math help to all and I'm really trying to build this channel and a website to go alongside it. So every like really helps me out. And otherwise I will catch you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.